Hey everybody, welcome to Hope Something Sticks, I'm Bert. And I'm Matt. So, before this uh, episode we were talking a bit, uh, I was playing uh, Hearthstone and telling them how uh, my opponent totally dicked themselves over, and then uh, it kind of transitioned to just talking about Blizzard in general, and uh, kind of the clusterfuck that happened over there. Right. And I immediately accused Bert of being a woman-hating uh, mansplainer or whatever. <laughs> and then he, of course, uh, uh, promptly corrected me and said, oh yeah, they've replaced somebody. So that's it. There. Justice, Every, I suppose. Everything's fixed, yep. Yeah, right? Fixed forever. We right. replaced one snake with another snake, I guess? I don't know. From what I understand, it doesn't look like any of the demands were met. There was like this huge alliance that was made. <laughs> but then there was this huge horde that came in and fought them to a standstill, and now everything's just at a stalemate. Right back where it started, yeah, right? Not that walking out and striking and boycotts don't work. Clearly something happened, and everybody was paying attention to it. And now there's a whole lot of arguing going on on Twitter. Which, about this, this this time. Yeah. Who we got? You were playing Hearthstone? I was. That's right. So let's see. Won't be streaming Hearthstone today. This is David... This is Dog Dog. <laughs> <laughs> David Caro. And he has this, oh my gosh, he's got a manifesto. I'm not reading all this. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in totally in favor of every type of boycott or walkout that's possible. Like, just go ahead and do it. I don't really care. Uh, I mean, if it's, you know, for a good cause. Certain boycotts are, like, kind of ridiculous. Oh, did you hear? There's uh, this one boycott that... Uh... My uh, coworker signed off, signed on, you know, uh, on for Pokemon Go, where they increased the size of increased the size of the uh, diameter around each Pokestop uh, twofold, so that you could like you know get to Pokestops like you know from farther away, you know for COVID. Uh, and then they just shrink that back out down to normal size, and there's this whole, uh, you know, no Pokemon, you know, Pokemon Go, no day. Uh, I think it was two days ago wow. where people were supposed to not wow. play Pokemon Go, so that they because was, they didn't like the that the, they made the game harder. Uh, they made it more. They made it less convenient. Uh, what did I but, say? But, no, it's like. <laughs> This is not a game that's hard because it's not really a game. You're just collecting Pokemon, uh, and that's if it takes more time to do, I call that harder. Yes, sure. more tedious. How about that? Is that is that a better medium? Yeah, like uh, like my coworkers like this is bullshit. Like I used to be able to get to this Pokestop, you know, by just sitting here at my desk. He, he just plays Pokemon Go like constantly, like wherever oh, the fuck great. he is. Yeah, he's got like this uh, battery pack I'm sure, pack that's I'm sure he's making phone. twice as much as me. <laughs> All right, so he can. So now he has to actually what get up for and walk around like the game is intended to be played. Yeah, it's total bullshit. That was the whole point of it. <laughs> it was to get these you know fat ass kids off the couch and then run over. No, I mean workers' rights is one of the best things to boycott over. And to stand in solidarity with them, uh, that would be great. I've been standing in solidarity with them since the beginning of the game's invention. <laughs> yeah, like I, like we were talking about, it's uh, it's interesting, but it it just feels like I'm looking at a slot machine, which okay. You're talking about Hearthstone. Hearthstone specifically, yes. Yeah. Not pocket. Not Pokemon. I never played Pokemon. I don't even know what the. I kind of. Th think I know what the mechanics look like. You, like, hold your phone up and you see the Pokemon, right? Yeah. And, th and then, okay, like, then, you, then there's this, you know, uh, you catch it with, like, this virtual ball. You, like, you flick the ball at the Pokemon on the phone. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. 
And there's a few items that you can have that makes it easier to catch them, and some of them are harder to catch or whatever. Cool. And that's the thing that caused car accidents five years ago. Mm -hmm. And people falling off of cliffs. Holy shit, people fell off of cliffs doing this? Yeah. I like how you say that. Yeah, of course. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> I don't know why I'm. So, I don't know why I'm surprised. Didn't that uh, bikini girl, the bikini selfie girl, who's like the bikini mountain climber, she would wear skimpy clothing and, and go take scenic shots for Instagram or something like that? Didn't she fall off a mountain doing that? Uh, I'm sure there's more than one of those, but yeah, I think uh, one of them did fall off. Well, I guess she died doing what she loved. Mm. Brutal. Yep. Any other hot boycotts going on nowadays? That's the only two that I was aware of. Uh, but back to that. Israel? That, Isn't that pretty popular nowadays? Boycotting what? Israel? Isn't um, boycotting Israel pretty popular? It's, I don't know, I think it's pretty played out. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we talked about the, the Ben and Jerry's thing. I was about to say, didn't Ben and Jerry, did, has Ben and Jerry's capitulated yet? Okay, we'll come back. Um, to specifically to, what was it, they pulled out of the West Bank? They won't sell ice cream there anymore. So, well, they won't sell, so, I believe they sell ice cream through like a, uh, you know, franchises, and if the franchises don't, if, if the franchises don't stop uh, selling in the West Bank, then they don't get any Ben and Jerry's ice cream at all. So, so if you can't sell gotcha. in the West, if you don't sell, if you sell in the West Bank, they will cut you off completely, and then there's no Ben and Jerry's in Israel. So I think think that's the gotcha. Tech, so you're not getting you're totally cut off. Gotcha. So and then Florida and Texas are like, well, fuck that. Then we won't have any Ben and Jerry's either. Like, oh, I didn't know this was the thing that you wanted in on, but I mean, all right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not it's actually not Ben and Jerry's specifically. It's like the uh, the pair company of Ben and Jerry's decided this, and now yeah, Florida and Texas and maybe a few others are threatening to boycott that company. I forget what I think it starts with a V or something. Let's see. I'm sure Pepsi or Coke own them. Definitely not Coke. Probably not Pepsi either. No, it, it's some company I hadn't heard of before. But it's like, you know, one of those like super big companies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Unilever. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So... Yeah, I don't know. That's a pretty big move by a uh, multinational conglomeration such as Unilever. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it was, they thought they'd be better off doing that probably because the uh, everyone knows Ben and Jerry's is uh, ice cream only enjoyed by liberal people. <laughs> Who, uh, That's right. Yeah, I remember they had a big uh, deal with uh, like Stephen Colbert and his Americone Dream or whatever. Yeah, really wasn't that good. No, I liked it. I'm not a big fan of the cones. In my mm -hmm. ice cream, Reese's all day. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, if the if those things in if those Boycotts in those states go through, then uh, it definitely would not have been worth it. But now I, I don't know. I don't see how they can go back. Is then like all the you know super liberal people's like, oh, now you're backing off. Blah, 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 blah. Now we won't eat your ice cream either. Oh, who's gonna eat our ice cream now? Fuck. I mean, I will if I really want ice cream. Not something I actually go out of my way to go get. 
Yeah. So it's uh it's like overpriced and gimmicky. So <laughs> I boycotted for that reason. The moral of the story is uh don't get involved in the Israeli Palestinian conflict at all. <laughs> if you can help it. It never works out for you. Kind of looks like Illinois has the same kind of thing. I'm reading something here that says... Or I'm sorry, it's the specifically it's the Illinois Investment Policy Board. It, there's actually a state law already on the books. Prohibits investment in certain companies that do business with Iran, Sudan, as well as companies that boycott Israel. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. No doubt. J.B. Pritzker, interestingly silent on this issue. That's our current governor, in case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, on the lighter side of the news, have you seen uh, any uh, Olympic coverage? Specifically, if you haven't been watching Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg do the highlights, it's outstanding. Yeah, I haven't. Should check that out. You are in. You are in for a treat then, because I mean it's it's borderline Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg hate my homeland type jokes. Oh yeah, they're not trying to be mean, but I can see how it comes across as they're just laughing at people's last names <laughs> and also the sport they play. <laughs> yeah, like they were. They had a whole bit. About the uh, Belarus won the gold medal in trampoline, in men's trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh god, they had a whole bit about uh, bring your kid to work day. Or rather the other <laughs> way around, bring your parent to school day. Like, hey, what's your dad do? Oh, he's a trampoliner, trampolinist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's out in the back right now. <laughs> Just look at him go. <laughs> but it's intense, that dude... That trampoline gets high. They are going... That guy's got to be 15, 20 feet in the air. Yeah, I'd imagine so. This guy must be like the best guy at trampoline ever. Yeah, he got a gold medal, and he didn't fly off of the thing. Most impressive. I'll say, considering Simone Biles had to, you know, got a case of the twisties, you see why. Yeah. Have you been following the Olympics at all? Yeah. And uh, it's funny, like, uh, I would, you know, I read, like, a whole bunch of uh, different news networks and, you know, like, and websites. So I go on, like, you know, CNN and Fox and Washington Post and Jerusalem Post and BBC. So and it's funny, like, with, like, when Simone, like, you know, initially pulled out. Uh, at, you know, you know all the articles about it. Like there's just like a whole bunch of fucking hate. It's like, oh, you know, this isn't someone we should hold up as a hero. But blah, she sucks. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then like you know, it came out that her like her aunt died like during the Olympics. It's like, yeah, well, you. Know. <laughs> yeah, her aunt's like, oh, yeah, kind of jumped. Kind of jump both feet forward on this one. Could have sworn it was going to be a Black Lives Matter thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't get why people throw their stupid jerk-off opinion in when they don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Gotta sell that headline, man. I guess. You gotta run the steam. You know that people are gonna be... Their blood's gonna be up about it. Everybody's super amped up. Uh, athletes are, I don't know, more political than ever. Yeah. And everybody's staring at their phone all day, so the next thing that they're got to get their eyeballs to stop scrolling. Just stop giving a shit. You could just stop giving a shit. This is true. My family, oh man, just about everybody had an opinion on that one. <laughs> And this is, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know about the aunt, her aunt passing away. It was more along the lines of, uh, 
the debate over taking a mental health day because there are uh, some people in my family who don't know what the hell that may mean. They've never heard of it, and they think it's complete bullshit. And other people who are distinctly, adamantly in favor of it. Hmm. Yeah. It's real fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, as far as I, I mean, to, to be a gymnast at that level, it pretty much has to be your entire life. And like the pinnacle of that is the Olympics. And I mean, if you pull out of it, there must be a pretty damn good reason. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, let's just, just, call, her, let's I mean, just, just call her M. M thinks that it's a uh, a total conspiracy theory. Sure, I mean she thinks that she thinks the Russians paid her. <laughs> the Russians paid her. Oh yeah, they paid her to take a dive so that then uh, <laughs> we won the gold anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean there, there's another American that was you know won a whole bunch of the individual events that some of Bob's was gonna go into so. Yeah, I know, and then we kick their asses anyway. And then Sunisa, Sunisa Lee completely steps up to the plate and yeah. wins the all-around. Like, holy shit. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, no, really. Yeah. Her it, brain it, and her body weren't moving in sync. So, you know, what do you, what do you want? <laughs> it, it happens. Injuries happen. But injuries of the brain are like, uh, Bert, er, uh, she's a quitter. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, that, you know, it very well might be her last Olympics. Like, usually, you don't have too many uh, people in gymnastics. I mean, what, she, she's like in her, like, mid-20s now or something? Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, going I, even further, that would be even more dangerous. Yeah, I mean... Like, may, gymnastics is completely destroys you. Yeah, so maybe... Maybe she'll... I mean, this is probably her peak right now. Like, I don't know. You know, she's not going to get better. You know, especially by the time the next Olympics comes around in four years. Yeah, no doubt. So. And she went out there and invented a new move that nobody even saw before. Mm-hmm. Or didn't even think was possible. That's the amazing thing about the Olympics is that it's how these athletes are are just so finely tuned. They're making They're making new history and just crushing it in completely different ways yeah. that were unthinkable back in the day. That's why I'm laughing about the the, the whole notion of them being uh, amateurs. Mm. If this is all you do all the time, like, what the hell's your day job? Selling insurance? <laughs> well, now with NIL, uh, you could do that if you want. Or at least be the spokesperson of the insurance company. <laughs> Actually, yeah. What's her? Uh, that, uh, who's the the meme gymnast? She's she sells insurance with Geico. The meme g- gymnast. Oh, she's on a uh, the the Gecko commercial where she flips up onto the uh, <laughs> onto the roof to get a frisbee. I don't think I've seen that at commercial. All right, never mind. Is she like an actual? No gymnast or yeah that's why i say she was a meme one because she won silver a few years ago and she was clearly disappointed <laughs> michaela maroney there we go i looked it up yeah she got gold in 2012 in london and then i think she came away with silver in rio oh shucks yeah right Damn, I was only the best for this one point in time. Then became the second best. Yeah, I know. She can't be. Hey, not everybody can be the women's water polo team for the U.S., okay? I actually saw that like uh, when they were going against Russia, they came from behind to win it. Yeah, just a quiet three-peat there. Uh, yeah, boring. Mm-hmm. But one thing they totally crush in the the Russians is a uh, five person synchronized swimming, <laughs> or maybe it was six people. 
It was like insane to watch. It was wow. Ah. It must have been really soul crushing for everyone else that watched that. How fucking perfect that was. Like uh, I, it looks I, like I, there's I, I didn't see anyone eight. else compete, but they got a ninety-seven point something, which I think is pretty good, especially if it's out of a hundred. Now, did they win the synchronized? Uh, no, is synchronized swimming the same as? I think they renamed it. Yeah, they did rename it to. Uh, it's artistic swimming now. Yeah, something like that. It's, 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 yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Just change the name of it. And I don't think you're allowed to refer to them as Russians, since they've been technically banned. Well, the Russian Olympic Committee, <laughs> people of Russian citizenship. I, I I don't really get that. They're not allowed to hoist up the uh, the Russian flag. That's the big ban. They also don't play the uh, Russian national anthem. Oh man. <laughs> you burned me. I mean, I guess it's, you know, they're punishing the country and not the, uh, you know, athletes. True. I mean, if they really wanted to punish the country, they would, uh, I don't know, allow all these athletes to, like, go and win the medal specifically for another country. <laughs> that would hurt. It's like, wow. Kenya's got a really good synchronized <laughs> swimming team. Oh, that was one of the best... Uh, sorry to come back to Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg, but they had a great joke about Ira Brown. Because Ira Brown is on... Oh, man, what's he on? Uh... Oh, sorry. Dead air. Ira Brown's on the Japanese, I think it's the three-on-three -three basketball team. Hmm. <laughs> they, they just have a great lead-up to it. Because Kevin Hart's like, he starts reading off the Japanese team uh, as his underdog for the three-on-three. -three. Mm -hmm. And of course he's got, you know, super long Japanese name, super long Japanese name, and Ira Brown. <laughs> <laughs> now, in case you're wondering how Ira Brown got on there... <laughs> And, uh, uh, it's an outstanding video because it's essentially, uh, uh, the blind side type story, except oh, yeah. better <laughs> because he grew up in Texas. He was adopted by his, uh, white basketball coach, ended up getting, he played for the Royals in their minor league system. He didn't get drafted. He played, then he went to Gonzaga didn't get drafted in the NBA, went over to Japan at the age of 32, and now he's a fucking superstar over there. Huh. And he's Kevin Hart's underdog of the week. It's good stuff. So, see that um, finally unlocked the secret to getting uh, more people to go get vaccinated. Uh, having things go really, really bad. Oh, really? Do tell. So, and it's, it's like uh, all these deep south states are having uh, quite a uh, problem with uh, the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Don't you mean the Sherman variant? Because it's burning through the South. Uh, I did not get that reference. Sherman? General Sherman. Civil War. Oh, okay. Scorched Earth policy. Moving on. So, yeah, it's, like, really big in Florida and Louisiana. Pretty much all the uh, SEC uh, states. Yep. Fact, Over 22,000 cases fact, a day in Florida. In fact, uh, 
the top 10 states uh, have schools that are in or will be in uh, the SEC of, you know, how many COVID, COVID cases there are per capita. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so is the SEC going to do anything about that? Are they going to require their players to be vaccinated? I mean, why don't they just require all the fans to be vac- vaccinated? That would instantaneously do it. <laughs> Nobody, what are they going to do? They're going to boycott football? <laughs> yeah. That's all, all that would make everyone's have. head fucking implode down there. Football well, is religion down south, listeners. Football is religion down there. Yeah, they have literal statues of football players. All of Alabama's economy would collapse if both if they boycotted both Auburn and Alabama. Instantaneous vaccination sp- spikes. If they just you know what you got you got to get it. And you know what? You you know when you have to get it? You don't show a card to get into the game. You get vaccinated at the game. That would do it. Vaccination in Alabama has gone up to 95%. 95? <laughs> we got to get those numbers up. So the only thing I'm saying for that is if... If a t- if a team has over eighty five percent of their players vaccinated, then they don't have to get tested all the time. Well, that's a start. I'll take it. Yeah. At least there's some kind of requirement in place. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And what about fans? So they're not going to require fans to show any kind of proof that you've either been negatively tested or. There has, that you actually have a vaccination card. There's been no communication one way or the other about Ugh. that. I mean, even Lala was kind of a joke. You saw how people were like holding up their cards for like one second. The, ga- the gatekeepers were not looking at those cards. Yeah, I know. I know Lala wants to say, "Oh, you know, ninety that was a ninety-two percent of all the participants, everybody who walked through the gates was actually had a card." Sure, they could just but print it that off. Of they had card. they had a card. Yeah, exactly. They had something in their hands. I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, getting into Lala. I think the one time I went to it, uh, the one time we went to it. Yeah, I don't even remember them checking our tickets. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we, I don't even. I mean, the I mean, gate it, was so long, and we were there so early. It was like they didn't even care. <laughs> like, damn, you can stay here all day. Knock your socks off. I guess. I mean, it, they weren't tickets per se. They were. Uh, they were wristbands. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about the wristband. And not just wearing it there, then wearing it for like the next week to show everyone, show off to everyone that you were there. Yeah. Because there, being at a hot, sweaty, drunken, drug-induced stupor while getting heat stroke, super cool. So fucking cool. Lala for life. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. Uh, That's Lollapalooza, in case anybody doesn't know that Lollapalooza is officially Lala now, and barely a, it's barely even a rock show. It needs to go back to its roots. They need to burn it all down. Yeah, back, back in our day. <laughs> <laughs> back when it was, you know, it's the, it would still be the same exact drunken, drug-induced stupor with a side of heat stroke, but at least the music would be better. Yeah. Alabama Shakes, Paul McCartney. Oh, Alabama Shakes with Park, Paul McCartney. If you say so. I was yeah. too busy on those other things I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. You I were, couldn't get past those. I was having too much of a good time. <laughs> puking your guts out and then being embarrassed and then putting your shirt over the puke so people wouldn't notice. Poor shirt. That shirt didn't deserve that. 
poor forty dollar shirt. Actually, I'm wearing the. Uh, after that, like you didn't have a shirt, and so we both bought shirts uh, at the end of the concert, and I'm actually wearing that shirt right now. So oh, like, get out of here! Very comfy, yeah. Oh wait, that's when I yeah duh that's when I got the forty dollar shirt. Forty dollar shirt, yeah. So what happened to that shirt? I think you just left it there. No, 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 not the destroyed shirt. Yes, I did leave that there. No, I meant the $40 shirt that I ended up picking up. Who cares? Stupid tangent. So what's the live music scene like out in uh, Arizona? Uh, I don't know. I haven't gone to see any uh, live music. Uh, Stepped off a cliff on that one. When I was in L.A., uh, last time we went to this, uh, we go to this bar called the Dubliner that's by our hotel. It's just Irish pub and they always got Irish folk music going. That was pretty good. Oh, that's pretty sweet. All right. How about in Chicago? I have not been to anything recently. I think. It's really, t- I mean, nothing's really open open up entirely yet. Right. Oh, wait, is it August? It is August. I forgot. Oh, man, I just lost two months. You are a week into August. Certain things are definitely open. The problem is that my friends are still somewhat nervous yeah. about actually going out, which is ironic because we've been out several times to many bars, which is the same exact thing. All I know is they're definitely not going to any Eric Clapton shows. Did you, did you know that he won't, uh, if any venue requires proof of vaccination, he's not going. <laughs> the weirdest, most random famous people are coming out as anti-vaxxer. It's really weird. What a hero. Like Novak Djokovic. World's best tennis player. He's an anti-vaxxer. And also a, apparently an enormous uh, spoiled brat. You talking about Djokovic? Yeah, Novak Djokovic. Mm. I mean, never mind him throwing his racket into the stands and nobody giving a shit about him needing a mental health day. Because <laughs> he didn't take it. Yeah, he clearly didn't take his mental health day or his nap, and so he had a nice big tantrum. Yeah, like a man. <laughs> <laughs> One year ban. One year ban for unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm calling it now. Yeah, probably it's a good thing I'm. It's a good thing I'm not emperor of the globe. Be a lot of very specific punishments going around. Oh, did you litter? Bam. That's it. No kids. No kids for you. <laughs> Take them away. I don't know. You get to see them grow up and stuff, but it's going to be like Black Mirror, where they can't like see you. You know that, like, blurred out episode? I don't think I've seen that one. You can, like... It, like So think of, like, blocking or muting on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, that ha- that happens except visually and audi- uh, auditorily. So, so you'll, like, see this amorphous blob coming towards you. And it's just, like, blacked out. Or it's not blacked out, it's, like, static. And you can't hear who it is, you don't know who it is. And... Yeah. Hmm. Seems like it'd be easy for them to kick the shit out of you and then uh, run off and scot free. Like, wait, who was it? I don't know. I've blocked everyone around me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I'm misremembering the episode. There was definitely some kind of punishment uh, for getting too close to the person. Hmm. Okay. There was also some kind of restraining order involved. This is good stuff. Hope Something Sticks is getting right back to its roots of being an incredibly dark show. That's good. (laughs) So, uh... Bit of exciting news that I haven't shared yet. Uh, Got a new job. Oh, that's right, yeah. Fully remote, so I can stay away from all of you diseased 
meat bags. It's good stuff. Yeah. So you get to stay in Chicago? Can't wait. Yeah, it sounds like I definitely didn't get the job because I'm outside of Chicago. It sounded like it was location dependent because they initially wanted to, I could tell in the first sentence, because I initially applied for one job and then they, the recruiter or the uh, person at the company, she, she just said, well, you're not really a fit for that one, but there is this other position. And she was just sort of throwing that out as a feeler. She was about to reject me, and she's like, are you outside the city? Because she was looking at the address of where I currently work, which is outside the city. Or where I currently used to currently work. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 I live in the city. She's like, oh, fantastic. So just because I had a city address... Uh, that pushed me forward in the application process, and why boom, does she boom. care? I don't know. It didn't make much sense to me because it's a remote. But oh no, I know why. Uh, because they ultimately are going to try and have an office in Chicago. Uh. So it's remote for now. So, you're but just I don't gonna, care. So you're because just gonna leave, like right when it stopped becoming remote. Fuck yeah. But I'll at least have remote experience. So that way, it'll build me up for the next remote job. Mm. Okay. I mean, it's a job at a software company, so... The way these things go, it feels like they don't really... They they almost anticipate or expect people to just sort of leave after a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And with the significant pay increase, uh, I can pretty much do whatever the fuck I want at this point. Yeah. Considering I practically live in a tent right now, so pretty good at uh, keeping my expenses low. Living light. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, but uh, you told me that you're... Well, former job was uh, not too pleased with you when you gave the two-week notice? Of course not. They wanted to keep me as their slave. And I was uninterested in doing that. Mostly because I didn't stick the landing on that. I kind of felt bad because I'd never really... uh... Most of the time when I'd given my two weeks notice, I was incredibly sure that I definitely wanted to leave. But this place was, uh, you know, I had come to, dare I say, form friendships with some of the employees there. Mm. So being, and you know, working shoulder to shoulder with people, I'm a fucking human being. So I kind of felt bad about leaving them. But so when I was giving my two weeks notice, I mentioned the word matching. Now, this is a pro tip for anybody trying to leave their job. (laughs) Don't fucking say that. (laughs) <laughs> of course, that's probably obvious for everybody else. It's not that obvious for me. It wasn't at the time. I let my emotions get the better of me, and I let that word f- tumble out of my mouth. So then they spent the rest of the day apparently trying to actually match. Now, I had sent that as a courtesy. I didn't think they were actually going to try to match the, the increased wage. That's a pretty this is what's fucked up about increase. this place. They could, they could, Exactly. If they could have afforded the increase all this time, that's the important thing to focus on here. Mm-hmm. That's how badly your boss is currently fucking you over. What <laughs> is your position budgeted for? That's the magic word to ask. If the position is budgeted for this and they don't want to give you that, then keep moving. Keep walking. doesn't matter what they're offering. Like, oh, well, we can offer you this. And that's exactly what my boss would have done. He would have come in under the number that the other place was offering. And tried to lowball me into, you know, just dragging me along. Just, eh, well, you know. No. We're done here. So, yeah. I uh, pissed him off, and then they told me to uh, not show up for the next two weeks. Yeah. Well, now you get to come here. Exactly, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> Free two-week vacation, motherfucker. 
Uh, not really. They made me cash in my vacation days, so uh. technically it, I'm taking my vacation early. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You had two weeks of vacation? Uh, no, I had... Uh, no, they shafted me out of that last week of pay. So I think I only had a few days left of vacation. Like four or five. Okay, so they're so only in a... giving my two-week notice, half of that was actually notice. And that half that was actual notice that I actually would have ended up needing to work to get paid, they just said, eh, nah, we're good. Well, fuck you, I'm not gonna use it. So just fire me and pay me out, then give me the exact same amount of money. You'd think. Uh, uh but no. Yeah. It's all fed up better. Yep, yep. I am now part of the pantsless army. <laughs> so I was thinking that maybe we go see a Diamondbacks game. Every time we uh, go to, either when I go to Chicago, you come, you know, to where I, I live. Uh, the professional team that's you know it's currently in the season four is always away, like every single time, except this time. I'll actually be here. All right. Diamondbacks Padres, right? Yep. Well, no, we did try going to uh we tried going to a Cubs game. Like it was the spring training. But it was so like packed or yeah, something that we it couldn't find parking. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah, there were like people walking past us saying, Nope. Full. Right, right. And then there were people who were like getting threatened to tow be towed because they didn't have enough parking at the facility. <laughs> yeah, it was so overflowing. So we just said fuck it and went to a casino. Both made money. It was a good time. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. We're multi millionaires. Just kidding. Well, we'll finally be able to see each other after a year and a half. What was that? It's been a year and a half since we've seen each other, right? Uh, that's, that's right. That yeah. game was in Feb. That was that game was in February. Gonna be very fun stuff. And then, uh, yeah, then, then again, not too far after that. Hopefully, uh, the Bama game. Man, it's a good couple of months coming up here. Oh yeah. Oh. Pretty excited to see what the Gators got this season. Feeling, we're feeling pretty good about it. Uh, we just got a tr pretty big transfer, Elijah Blaze. If you remember that guy, Elijah. Say it one more time for me. Elijah Blades. Elijah Blades. I don't know what I think about him. Yeah, he's a pretty big uh, cornerback prospect. He was he was committed to us a few years back and then backed off it. Then and went to he was supposed to go to Nebraska. Then he didn't. And he went to junior college, and then he and then he played for Texas A and M, and then he opted out of last season for COVID reasons, I guess. No. And now nice. he's transferring out from Texas A and M to us. And uh, I'm guessing it's going to start uh, practicing with the team in full camp. That's great. Which started uh, late last week, or I guess I think it started either Thursday or Friday. That's good stuff. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what uh, Emory Jones. I think more player. I think more player. Yeah, Emory Jones, of course but really just more players in general, how they're going to react to having a full year to letting their bodies uh, just recover from the torture that is football. Yeah, well, and also uh, have that time to kind of build up to your body. Because, uh, like, uh, exactly. this, this one guy, 
uh, Stuart Reese, who was, uh, he transferred in from Mississippi State, you know, this uh, uh, offensive lineman. Uh, he, he was supposed to be good, but he, he like, didn't play too well last year for us. And uh, kind of looks, seems like a uh, big reason for that is because he gained like a, a shit ton of weight because they didn't have like a normal uh, spring ball and off season. Hmm. So uh, and then uh, then he ate, then he had a concussion, and then also of COVID protocol, yeah, and then he gained some more weight. So so he trimmed down a lot and uh, kind of got himself regimented, and uh, hopefully we'll have a much better year this season. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting because kind of looks we, like we lost like a lot of veteran guys, but. There's like a whole bunch of young guys who were, you know, like really good, like, t- you know, athletic that we didn't use because I think because we didn't have, you know, spring tr- camp or, or, you know, whatever uh, past season. So I guess they just didn't trust them to play as much. Yeah, there's definitely going to be the rust factor. That's why I'm also interested in seeing how people react to the having a year off. Will they be able to stay frosty? That is going to be the question. Well, you got a couple relative cupcake games at the beginning of the season, so... Can't sleep on them. Can't sleep on them anymore. It's not automatic like it used to be. Uh-huh. Every Appalachian state. It's F-A-U. They got it for us. It's FAU and USF. I mean, FAU was on the verge of turning their program around, or at least they thought they were about to. And USF always has a chip on their shoulder, because they're not really in South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they want to call themselves UWF. What's wrong with that? Who cares? I guess if Why? USF flows better. <laughs> I, I mean, the logo's tight, but. It's not yours, man. It's not right. <laughs> South Florida is Southeast Florida. So, be, be interesting to see uh, the first game of the season out. Well, our first game too, but also uh, Alabama versus Miami. Should be fun. Alabama's playing Miami too. Yeah. We should. First game of the season. Damn. They're not. Uh, they're not holding back. That's wild. Yep. So, yeah. See so what they got. Got all, all new uh, offensive coaching staff and new starting quarterback. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, you know, they they'll, are. Be, they'll be good. But guess what the spread is on that? Without looking it up, I just did. Um, I would guess say. 18 points. Holy shit, nice guess. 18 and a half point favorites. Boom. Crazy. Canes suck, they suck, they suck, they suck, they suck, they suck, they suck. This year, last year, and all the years to follow. (laughs) Even though we barely beat them. That you know that was then. This is now. Yes, naturally. Don't care. Still wins. Wins are the wins are the wins. They still count. See you, bastards! In like two or three years, uh, that that offense we had was a kind of a sloppy mess until uh, Frank's uh, ankle exploded. Hmm. Did he ever shave that thing off his face? Um, uh, I think so. I mean, I'm all for endangered species habitats, but uh, <laughs> come on, man. Uh, I think Emory Jones is going to be pretty good. Dude, he can run, and then on occasion he can throw. <sighs> what do you want? No, oh, he's been doing a Gotta lot of build throwing. like a linebacker. Uh, He's been practicing with his receiver six times a, a week 
during the offseason. Yeah. Uh, he is going to be destructive. Oh, yeah. I think so. All right. I think that's about it. That's all I got. Yep. <laughs> is there some kind of doom happening in the world right now? Let's see... Um, oh, there's always there's always a, it's always cloudy with a chance of doom. Come on. No, uh, Alice, Allison Felix wins her eleventh Olympic medal, most ever by a U.S. track and field athlete. Oh yeah. Uh oh, and uh, Andrew Cuomo is a piece of shit. Apparently. <laughs> uh yeah. If you, if you couldn't tell by just looking, it's at just con- it's just con- <laughs> it's it's like confirmed now. Everyone already knew that, and everybody kind of put that on hold while COVID was happening. But yeah, COVID's over. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm quoting my father. <laughs> Kick his ass out. You want me to do the sign off, or do you want to do the sign off? Uh, I'll do it. Oh, and the U.S. is closing in on China on the amount of gold medals, but we are kicking the shadow in total medals. All these athletes deserve all the praise in the world for putting up with what they put up through, put up with their entire lives. And half of them, I mean, all of them are, they're within tenths or thousandths of a second in difference. So they're all there. Yeah. They're all they're all medal winners. <laughs> I hate medal counts. Uh, it's only way to just you know to see which country is the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Not your human rights record or what you're doing for the climate or to preserve our. Nobody you know, gives a shit about that. It's all nobody about cares. The about all right, come you know, yes. it's all about the what? points. Can't the points just be based on something else, though? Not <laughs> no. how fast this, how well this fourteen-year-old girl dives into a pool. This is the easiest way to calculate it. <laughs> is it? It's still pretty subjective. Unless you're like physically crossing a line. Like some of this other stuff is like, oh, look at how much water came out of the pool. Kinda. Yeah. No, anyway. Ooh, look how well they sing. look how well the artistic swimming went. Like, well, that's not art to me. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't think you saw that Russian team. That was pretty nuts. I'm not saying they don't swim incredibly well. No, anyway. United States has thirty six gold medals, thirty nine silver, thirty three bronze, and a lot of those medals came from UF athletes. You're welcome, America. All right. Yeah, no doubt. Suck our dicks. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, you can write us in at helpsomethingsticks at gmail.com. Till then. Peace. <laughs>